Okay, so let's recap everything <laughs> since the first version was basically unlistenable and the All second right. version was unlistenable. So now we're on lucky number three. <laughs> so we're just going to start off the podcast just like that. You did a cover of A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton. Holy shit. And it got picked up by a radio station. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Long version short. We did a real boring version with a fake band of ours. And then we decided to do a real version with a real band of ours. So uh, it took a couple extra weeks, but uh, really, really feel like that that those extra couple weeks and the extra mile that we went with the song re really made it something to be proud of and not just another kind of generic cover. Although maybe somebody thinks it's generic. That's fine, too. Yeah. <laughs> Although uh, we should we should give credit where it's due to uh, to Jimmy and Drew. One of our uh, we had two singers on th this uh, cover, just their friends of ours who uh Actually, we met um, our current singer, Drew, through our friend Jimmy, who was potentially going to sing for us, ended up not being able to, but is a fantastic singer. So we were like, hey, why don't you guys both just go on this cover and just go all out? And I think that's part of why it sounds so awesome, because it's two really incredible singers just going at it and giving it more power. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And it, do it definitely does shine, as I said before. But <laughs> it, it really just sticks out that you guys aren't just doing, like, the generic, like... There's there's a bunch of pop-punk bands that want to sound like Jordan Putnick of um, Newfound Glory or want to sound like Soupy or want to sound like, you know, you name it. But you guys have, like, a real interesting take to it. Like, it, it's kind of hard to describe, like... I hear a few in in the clean vocals. I hear a few like influences, but you're not really pinned down to one choice, which is pretty cool. And which really, you know, separates you from the rest of these guys. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And one, one thing I just have to say about that is that I know for, for myself and Matt and probably a lot of other people out there who aren't good singers themselves, 99% of what I've written in my life up to this point has remained instrumental so it was it was a, a challenge or it continues to be a challenge with the band to write stuff that kind of stays out of the way of that um you know all the stuff i've written up until this point i never expected any vocals to be over so i was just kind of writing it for me to be kind of a cool rock song and although this one's a cover like i said with all the original material we have coming up too it's it's been a lot of fun to work with drew our current singer uh lyrically because that's something else I've never had to do. And just to write songs that might sound simple when it's just the instrumental, but when the vocals are in there, it really kicks it up a notch. Yeah, it, and it's hard too. Like when you when you imagine a song one way and then you add in like more layers to it and you're like, ah, oh, but I really like it instrumental. And then the vocals come and they could really be hit or miss. There's like really no in between. So it's either you have it or you don't. And Right, and, right, and, right, right. Yeah. We drew especially um, that really he hasn't brought anything to us yet. He, he's basically we had a, a couple of versions of songs before he was in the band and he kind of decided to go from scratch on melodies and lyrics, which we were a little hesitant about. But I don't think there's anything we said that, no, we just want you to do kind of what we had in mind from the beginning. He's always improved it. So that's that's been real nice as well. Yeah, definitely. I noticed there's some covers that when you listen to. You, you kind of feel disappointed that they didn't do vocals for, you know? Yeah, th mm -hmm. there's a few. You're yeah. like, dude, like, this is totally a verse. Like, I could have seen vocals on it. But still, at the same time, there's never an instrumental I hear that's like, you know, oh, that sucks. I, I wish there was. I mean, you do. But in a sense, you kind of take it for what it is. You know, it's an right. instrumental. You love it the same way, and you take it or leave it. Um, I kind of compare it to that song that's, like, too short, you know? Then you're mm -hmm. like, I really want that riff to be played out a, a second or a third time in the song. You only hear it once, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's up to what the artist envisions it as, Dan. Un unfortunately, they don't consult you and go, oh, Daniel Tao, what do you suggest? <laughs> <laughs> do you think Godsmack cares that they have an instrument on their last album? Yes. I care about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So – you know, we're, we're, we are talking with the band. No, this is Patrick, and I'm not too sure if I mentioned that. It, it, it kind of sucks when we do something like three times. You're like, shit, I mentioned this here. <laughs> I forgot that there. But anyways, like you guys are coming from the Nashville scene. You guys are currently in Nashville, not any outside suburbs or anything. So is it 
is it even more difficult to break out in that scene given that it's you know it's hard one way like it's hard for country but you know it's improving with like rock scenes and stuff like that i think it's it's pretty difficult it's it's sort of a double-edged sword where it's like it's pretty hard to get any sort of attention uh in nashville because everyone is too busy working on their own thing because almost everyone you know also is has a project they're pushing but at the same time it, it makes you better it's sort of a crucible of everyone here is amazing i better get get good and then so hopefully if you can if you can catch someone's eye in nashville then you're gonna do well elsewhere yeah i'd say one of the, the one of the the best things and one of the worst things is like local shows it's super awesome to go out and see bands that you've known like either since the beginning or even if you are just recently getting into them but they're still small enough that they do a bunch of Nashville shows within a couple months of each other. And that's great that you can go and see all this amazing talent in your own backyard, but it also sucks because there's only like 10 or 15 other people at the show yeah. when th these are the bands that should be making it and they're just not getting the attention. Maybe not because they're in Nashville per se, like maybe they wouldn't be doing any better anywhere else, but just that, you know, these, these are the people that are working the hardest that, you know, subjectively, of course, but that have the best music and are are the best playing together and the best musicians individually, and they're just not gaining traction because there's a thousand shows going on every single night in Nashville, and no one cares about it, someone they haven't heard of. Yeah, absolutely. When when you could go down the street and you know you could see the Black Keys play or something like that, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, that kind of goes everywhere. Like, it's, I know it's huge in California, like in the LA scene, and also in New York with the New York City scene. Like, it is hard to break away. That's why you see, like, a whole bunch of, like, obscure bands come out of nowhere. Like, for example, 311, like, everyone thinks they're a California band. They're from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Think <laughs> random. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Slipknot is from Iowa. Like, you, th you yeah. know, like, look at all this, and you're like, Okay, now I kind of see why. Like they are, they were unique for what they were, but they were also unique to to where they were. Like, did you think there was another Slipknot going on in Iowa? Do you think there was another Three Eleven happening in Nebraska? So I think location does play a big part in things, right? But. Which I guess that gives us in 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 a way that also gives us a bit of an advantage because there's far fewer like heavy bands or alternative type bands in Nashville. So that, that does give us a little bit of an edge to try and stand out from yeah, your your country and your indie and, and whatnot. Yeah, it's a lot of electro pop going on right yeah. now, which yeah. I'm not there's a, a lot of, of but... There's a lot of good ones, <laughs> but that is the dominant genre, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Now, do you get any like country influence from being in Nashville or... Uh, I'm gonna go hard no on not, that. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, not me. No. I feel like I'd be a hard no if yeah. I lived there too. <laughs> I yeah, kind of I can't think of anything where I've said, "Oh, I heard this in a country song. I'm gonna try that." Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, Matt Matt's from Georgia, and I'm from Wisconsin originally. So, I mean, it's, I mean, Georgia, I guess, has not as strong country roots. As I mean, Nashville. I'm 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 from like where like Alan Jackson's from and stuff. So okay. I had I had that growing up for sure. But I think but that's a whole different us, thing. Both of us came to Nashville like not liking country music. So yeah, I, I don't certainly think certainly not at the top of my list. Yeah, so I don't think either of us honestly are particularly open to the idea. It seems like a lot of it is just um yeah. not not nope. not really formulaic, but it, it's a very specific sound. That just wouldn't work for what we're yeah. trying to do. Now, bluegrass is another story. Yeah, bluegrass. Yeah. We start doing some sick, like, super clean, bendy guitar licks. Yeah. Lots of slide guitar and banjo. Yeah. That'll be on the second <laughs> album. Hey, you know, hey, that'd be awesome. You, you, you never know. Just have, like, a little breakdown with a little banjo on there. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's worth a shot. I mean, Reliant K has banjo sometimes. Yeah. I mean, they're not a hard band, but, you know, I, well, I do Well, no, but they're, they're, they're a pop-punk band to some degree. Yeah. Or were. Or, yeah, we're a pop-punk band. Huh. Yeah, what, what are they now? They're we're now deceased. No, 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 they're still around, but they're more, like, yeah. I want to say what, they're like, like pop, pop, pop rock. Yeah. Nickelback? No, no, not quite. It's it's more like a, um, shit, it's like, it's like well, a Well, he co-writes with Owl City a lot, so it's that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Basically, they went from, you know, be my escape to, you know, you would not believe your eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but speaking of Nickelback, did you see that? I don't know if it's true or not. They're like Canadian oh, police yeah. were like threatening to make like drunk drivers listen to Nickelback or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh man, the meme has gotten out of control now. Dude, seriously, I'm like, they're not that terrible. Like, is it because yeah. they're that popular that people, you know, like, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Some of their lyrics are terrible, but I'm like, they're not really that. Come on. We're not comparing Nickelback and Justin Bieber. Like, we I could, clearly yeah, know who's worse. I could find a lot worse than Nickelback. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, especially older Nickelback is, like, pretty heavy and, you know, oh, kind yeah. of, like, it's not the same as Nickelback this of today. This is how you remind All right, that's me. A, yeah, but that's really what you're doing now is what everyone takes Nickelback for. Exactly, and those are yeah. just the, the, you know, radio poppy songs that they put out. Dude, Burn It Through the Ground is a great song. Yeah. But, all right. That's, that's our Nickelback all. break. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're back to the podcast. <laughs> I, I love these weird fucking tangents that we go on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this isn't even the worst of our episodes. And no, uh, I don't know what the hell would would be our worst, Dan, tangent wise. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what we talked about in the Boon Tunes interview, so I, I can't speak for that. But yeah, I feel well, like that one, was the worst. No, because didn't we go from one second talking about music to like trees and shit? Yeah. So uh, I think it was episodes eight and nine of our podcast. Like, this is when we were like starting out, and we knew the an owner of a venue called Boon Tunes, located in the heart of Boonton, New Jersey, <laughs> and uh, he's also the drummer of a band that you know we've played with before. And he, his name is Justin, and we talked with him basically about like the venue. And then maybe like three seconds later, we were talking about squirrels in his attic. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening with my life right now? And not to mention the venue was it was in the middle of winter and he just opened and it was like mad cold. Yeah, he had like a space heater, but like it like it was on and it would be picked up by the mics. It was just a fucking mess. Hysterical <laughs> interview. Don't get me wrong. If you guys want to listen to it, it's up on iTunes. But, you know, it's. It was just odd as shit. And and the worst part about it was like we did on like what was it like a Wednesday night. We got there at seven PM and we left at one AM. <laughs> oh man. And both of us had like work the next day and I was like, Oh, I yeah, fucking I didn't hate feel life. I didn't feel too good that that morning. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm I'm guessing, you know, playing shows do you normally play on the weekends but have those weekday shows here and there? Uh it's yeah, it kinda just depends on what's open. Um it's it's usually whenever a band that sort of fits our our style comes through town uh they usually end up at the same venue where we we usually play at uh rocket town which is where most of the pop punk metal hardcore type bands play Mm -hmm. and that's that place is is awesome it was like a second home to me here and i used to volunteer at shows there all the time so Basically, if uh, if a pop punk band or a metalcore band is coming through and they're like, we need locals, they can be like, hey, you want to play this show, whatever day it is, and we're like, cool, put us down. Yeah, so it's not specifically like a weekday, you know, like, oh, you're just starting out, you get a weekday slot, or like, yeah. oh, you guys are pretty good, you get a weekend slot. It just is whenever, right now, it's just kind of whenever touring bands are coming through, yeah. and just whatever works with it, that schedule. True. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, wasn't Rocket Town... Uh, like one of those like heavy Christian venues and like they got some shit like a couple years ago. Is that the right one? Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. And I'll actually get to tell this story on the internet for people to hear. I actually was there for, for a lot of the stuff that happened. And I can say confidently that 99.9% of the things that were said on the internet were just super false just not true at all no the internet is false. That's <laughs> bullshit. They're always correct. Yeah. Uh-huh. Someone lied on the internet. Who would do that? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it is, it is, uh, I guess it's an all ages venue. It is somewhat of a Christian organization, but really it's all that matters. It's all ages. So it's just safe for, for kids of, of whatever, but yeah, some things happened and some bands, uh, try to take advantage of it for publicity. And unfortunately it worked to their advantage. Um, but yeah, so that there's a couple bands I definitely don't listen to anymore because I saw them try and pull a fast one and throw us under the bus. Oh, damn. <laughs> and which might they be? <laughs> um, I feel like I can say this because they're not close enough, but do you know the band Volumes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I hate those guys because they <laughs> basically <laughs> it was at a, it was at a show of mice and men and uh, basically tried to the dude was drunk was saying that everyone was so homophobic and stuff and everyone's like no we don't care like everyone's welcome and then he's like oh if you want to fight me or whatever and then he oh, man. he he tried to he tried to push like a 13 year old girl and security had to like choke slam him out the door nice. and so he tweeted he tweeted that he got jumped because he was uh he was being supportive of his gay friends and so everyone's like oh man they're so homophobic there and it, which is just absolutely false Damn, oh, and that, that completely spiraled out of control, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, the the bands, it was an Of Mice and Men tour, and they, Volumes got kicked off that tour that night because they were starting stuff, but the rest of the world thought that this dude got jumped for standing up for his gay friends, which is not what happened. Yeah, he turned into, like, a gay right activist out of nowhere. Exactly. It, it, when there was nothing, there was no, like oppression or, or hatred going on just it's the most welcoming venue i've ever been to which is saying a lot because i've been to a lot of amazing venues mm -hmm. yeah it, it is kind of odd you know just the internet in general like you could say one thing and if so many people believe you then it happens like you know this whole presidency is just completely crazy just the way the internet re is responding to it and I don't know if half the shit is true. I don't know if half the shit is untrue. Mm -hmm. And it's just odd. Like, it's hard to have, like, your own opinion about things without being labeled whatever word with the, uh, what is it? The, not the prefix. What's the other one? Suffix. Yeah, there we go. With the suffix of ist, I-S-T. You know, racist, uh, you know, stuff like that. Misogynist. And, you know, half the stuff that comes out of my mouth, you know, it is questionable. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Very questionable. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. No, but I mean, like, it's it's all in good fun. Like, if I'm going to call Dan, hey, you're an asshole. You know, a lot of people would take offense to that, and I still don't know why. Yeah, it would be like, stop picking on midgets, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what, did, what did midgets have to do with assholes? Um, you're picking on me, and I'm a midget. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm calling you an asshole. Dude, that's how people. I'm saying that's how people like oh, take okay. shit. You know? <laughs> Jump into conclusions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if you're picking on a black person, you'd be like racist. You know, like joking around. I'm not saying you're like le legitimately picking on a black person, but yeah, just in general. Yeah, but I mean, like, did we become too sensitive as a society? I w I'd say yes. You know, but there's still a lot of shit that's wrong with this country, obviously, and you know, it's we just have to deal with it more or less yeah i guess all you can do is treat people well in the real world and then not worry about what internet people think yeah yeah because i i mean look i could say anything right now behind a behind a monitor and no one would know it was me mm -hmm. you know I could, I could call you an asshole right now without even knowing who you are but I mean, obviously, people actually know who we are, so we're going to refrain from that. <laughs> <laughs> I still, but, you know, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. I still can't remember that. Ex it was like a, I don't know if it was a page or a program or an extension at Facebook, but it, it was like, I would say maybe a couple of years ago, five or six years ago, it was like this, this tool that you could basically comment to someone and it would be completely anonymous, and people would just use it to like rag on people. And you couldn't see who posted it or nothing. Really? Do you remember that? I don't no, know. I think you brought that up once, and I completely have no, yeah, I, no I recollection of it. I can't remember, but, like, some of my friends would use it to totally, like, harass ha harass certain people. and like. Of course, and because you, we've you, gotten there as a society. Yeah, it's, but that's the thing. You would never see that on a normal Facebook post from some people. Obviously, certain people don't care, but... Of course, if like you're attaching a face and a name to it, certain people aren't going to say anything, you know. Yeah, and but being when... a, and being a musician is like two hundred times worse. I mean, yeah. obviously, you got your uh, cover song up on YouTube. Is there any hate yet, or like any like trolling going on, or not really? There's there's a tiny bit. We've had a lot of positive responses that have been so encouraging, mm -hmm. um, and nothing too terrible. But the one that that made me laugh because when we were deciding to put the cover together, we're like. All right, did Four Year Strong do this one? No. Is this on Punk Goes Pop yet? No. So let's go for it. There, like a couple other bands have done it, but nothing huge. So we're like, all right, let's let's try and put our mark on it. Mm -hmm. And then we put up the ad, uh, like promoted Facebook post, and some one of the comments was just, "How many bands are gonna cover this shit?" <laughs> it just it just made me laugh because yeah. it's like before 
like I even started arranging it for a fake band that I mentioned earlier. Like I literally have never heard anyone else cover this song. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm in the genre. Like I right. enjoy I mean, listening certain, to this style um, of music. Certainly, someone has, but no one, no one that's got like any extensive amount of recognition like right. we're not it's not like oh this was like we were like oh prada did still fly let's do that again mm -hmm. yeah right like, and i'm sure we can all agree celebrities and bands reading hateful tweets is hysterical <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, is. I mean i think it's funny like yeah. all i care i'm just happy that people like are looking at it yeah. like if you get 500,000 people that dislike your video i mean that's better than two people you know disliking your video Exactly. Yeah. yeah, views of you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, watch time. That's a different story, but <laughs> right, yeah. right. No, but but I mean, that's my favorite part. Like, um, when we put up, uh, both Dan and I were in a band together, and we did a cover of Cisco's Thong Song, and we <laughs> were the only ones that did that, and it was like it, it got some, it got mostly great reviews of it, and then we had like some assholes from a certain controversy that we brought up so so many times on this fucking show couple of assholes decided to comment and say, yeah, you guys suck, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it was either myself or Dan kept egging him on because the more comments th that are on the video, the more popular it gets and the more well-known right. it's going to happen. I'm like, okay, let's egg him on. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, not for nothing. I'm not going to answer a comments like that and, and just, you know, go back and forth in like an angry rant. It's just going to be like funny stuff, you know, and joke right, around with them. Exactly. Just be a clever, funny response. And, and a lot of people don't even respond to that because they're like, they're expecting you to come back at it and be all angry. And when you don't, they like don't know what to say most of the time. So, yeah, we, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we we basically moved past the getting our feelings hurt. I mean, we actually had one troll on, I think, our Twitter on the Behind the Barricade Twitter, and he kept calling us hacks, and I'm like. Oh, this is fucking strange. So I'm like, how the hell are we hacks? And he's like, yeah, you're, you're a bunch of hacks. I'm like, all right, if you're not going to have a fucking discussion, then stop fucking trolling. You got, you suck at it. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. like, we started getting into things and I'm like, wait a second. I know this. And he actually turned out to be a fan of uh, the radio show, Opie and Anthony. And he started like dropping like little hints, like thinking that he was trying to um, do a segment called Jocktober where ONA used to like, find random radio stations like morning zoo stations around the country they'll hey this is where we are. like that kind of like hacky sort of material and they would go and they would feature these shows and they would just make fun of every little thing so this guy i apparently liked our stuff or didn't like our stuff i'm not even, i'm still not sure to this day and tried to do the same thing but it was like a one person army which was kind of funny <laughs> and <laughs> it went nowhere but you know i ended up like like tweeting him back and stuff like that. And once I found out he was a fan of the show, I just did show reference after show refer show reference after show reference. And he's actually pretty cool now, which is the oddest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's weird. But we turned I a think... troll around. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think my favorite, the favorite thing we've ever gotten was someone on Twitter was like went on a rant about bands following him and he referred to us as cringe core bands mm. and i was like man we should put that on a shirt like just <laughs> dude exactly own it. it i mean not for nothing you really have to all right so if you get a couple of hate hateful comments you got to put it past you if you're if you're only getting hateful comments you know there, you, there's only two things you can do just be like all right you know this sucks we're gonna stop or all right, nobody really likes it. Let's do something different. I mean, you just got to improve. But... Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't yeah, I mean, take guess... every comment and get pissed, but... Yeah. yeah, it would just... I guess for me personally, it would just depend what they're getting pissed about. If it's some, like, you know, just something silly, like it all has been for us, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah, fuck them. We'll just, you know, we'll keep on going. We have two songs out right now. Like, <laughs> you know, what are they judging us based exactly. on? Exactly. Like, you know, we're we're not even a full album in yet. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, don't judge a book by its cover and all that. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was like, literally only people are like, wow, every song sounds exactly the same. It's all the same chord structure. Like they have no good melodies and like just real. Like actual critiques. Yeah. Actual mm -hmm. critiques. That's worth listening to. Yeah. And every, if everybody was just like, literally all your songs are the same, your melodies are all the same. They're just in a different key. Like, or, oh, this is just a complete ripoff of, you know, whatever other band that they like more than us, you know, then we would step back and take a look and say, okay, 
is this, are they being objective about this? Are we really, do we really need to work on these things? Or is this just somebody who likes four years strong more than us? And they need to make sure that we know that. Yeah. I mean, you're either going to whine and cry. You're going to, you're going to not even care what they say and just laugh it off. Or are you going to take it and approve upon it? I mean, that's really all you can do. And obviously you're not going to whine and cry because you want to get better and you want to take in constructive criticism well so that and you have to have thick skin to be in a band i mean yeah. that's just goes without saying yeah so i'm it's it's the society we live in and unfortunately it's not going to change anytime soon but i think twitter is like the worst place for everything like youtube they i YouTube, i think what youtube's I think pretty worse youtube comments are probably yeah. one of the worst places dude there's so many fights it's like hysterical and that none of them are make any sense. They're just complete like disconnected non sequiturs, and it's it's pretty comical, but also like pretty depressing. Yeah, it could just be like something like, "Oh man, you know, this band, I really love them, and th this single is just horrible." And then you just get like five comments of people like, "You don't know what you're talking about. Just die." Like, stupid comments. <laughs> yeah, like, like really extreme stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kill myself. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I don't think we've gotten any death No, we haven't gotten anything that anything bad yet. Us to, like, well, ourselves. you're not a real band yet. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're only two songs our, in. We've our, got a couple more. Passage. Yeah, once the album comes out, we'll give it a couple weeks and we'll reevaluate. <laughs> Dude, you know what you should do? You should all go into your van and then just jump out of it and while your CD is playing and then everyone burns and <laughs> like come up with like some really sick shit and you're like, wait a second, can I call the cops on this? I mean, I wouldn't, sure. but... Like yeah. That's real specific, you know. Does that count as premeditated, or what's the situation here? Manslaughter. Yeah. Don't come to Tampa, or else me and my my FSU buddies are gonna come and they're gonna kick your asses. It's like, okay, got a, cool. got a green room situation going on. Yeah. It's really scary. <laughs> that has happened to bands though, getting in, like getting jumped. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. did you hear there was a band, a metal band, who got uh, Trivial? carjacked? No, it wasn't no. Trivium. It was a smaller band, um, but they got carjacked recently. Two of the guys while they're in their van, and they were. They, it was very clear that these guys were going to take them somewhere and kill them, so that there was like no witnesses. Mm -hmm. So like while they were on the road, they like fought back and wrestled the gun away from these dudes and crashed the van and got away. And I was like, what? that's so badass. <laughs> yeah, that is badass. That's like band of the year right there. Holy shit! What's so band metal? Was that? <laughs> Do you know what band that was? I can't remember the name, but um, yeah, I'm sure if you looked up metal band carjacked or something, that would be the first thing that came up. It was pretty recent. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> Holy shit. There can't be that many. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty scary, but like, Holy props shit, to those guys. <laughs> there's 50 metal bands that got carjacked last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, that would be, that'd be scary. That, yeah, that would be pretty nuts, but wow. I, where do you go from there? It's like you got you, you can't even leave that band. Because, I mean, obviously you'll be the band known as, you know, the carjacking band. Now you got to write a song about it and be like, guys, this is a true story. And then it's just all the more metal. And then put it up on YouTube and be like, that didn't happen. That's false. They're faking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anything, Dan? Uh, nothing really comes up if you do metal band carjacked. <laughs> Although that, that would be a good name for a band. Carjacked. I was gonna say, there's probably already there's probably a band comes up that's called Carjack. Yeah. If you just do metal band Carjacked, you just come up with like, like, man Carjacked with like a metal crowbar. Yeah. You know, like anything using those 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 words. Yeah. Bastards. <laughs> it, it it does sound like a hardcore band. What's up, motherfuckers? We're called Carjacked. Start this motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, man. With the same fucking riffs over and over and over again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, you guys have mentioned before that you have uh, two songs out and you're currently working on the album. How's that whole process been so far? Uh, slow but steady. We're, we're kind of perfectionists, so... Uh, frustrating, more than... Yeah, I'd say frustrating. One, if you gave us one adjective, <laughs> right now, frustrating is what comes to mind. Mm -hmm. But But not... I mean... I can't say in a good way, but in a good way because it's for a good reason. Yeah, not in a discouraging way, for sure. It's, right, it's, yeah. We're, yeah. We have, it's because we have a lot to work with. Like, Sean and I have a lot of material. Drew's been bringing a lot to the table, and we're just uh, trying to perfect one thing at a time, but hoping to be done very early next year. Okay, that's that does sound pretty promising. 
and the two singles that you released so far, I'm assuming all positive. Um, yeah, we're uh, they'll, they'll both be on the album too. The first one, um, actually was with a previous singer, um, that we parted ways with amicably. He's a, he's a great dude, but um, before Drew joined us, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna re-record that. Yeah, that's for the a great album. idea. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll have a new version, um, but yeah, they'll both be on there. But uh, a thousand miles is probably a pretty good, uh, pretty good indication of what the album will sound like. Like it'll be relatively diverse, but overall, sound wise, that's that's pretty close to what you can expect. Yeah, a lot of kind of fast melodic punk, yeah, like structure, and then just lots of dynamics, occasional and- breakdowns. Often, often, just yeah, you know, whatever not to sounds take it cool, too seriously. But um, we like we like cheese. We like over yeah, the top. We, so. We're not afraid to get a little campy. Yeah, that makes the show all that more fun too. You know, if it's if it's, I mean, that's why it's called Easy Core. You yeah. know, it's something fun. It's it's not super technical, but I mean, it depends. There's it depends on the band, and we've got some fairly technical stuff. But I guess we've been playing a lot of these songs for so long, or playing them over and over to record. Yeah, they seem easier or less technical but when you step back they're they're fairly involved yeah. which is if one you, of my favorite things being able to play really take the instrumental stuff seriously without being too dark or off-putting just still be an accessible upbeat song right you got to make it so that somebody is going to want to or that's not that's just that somebody is going to connect with it and that it's going to make people be like oh man i love this song like i can't wait to see it live you know yeah that'll make it because I know that's happened with me a bunch where just either a, a, a whole band or even just a song or two from a specific album or whatever hasn't been fantastic on the record or I kind of listen to them and it's like, oh, that's not really my style. But then they were opening for somebody else or what have you. And then I was like, man, that was really kick ass and it makes the songs that much more awesome and it makes me really appreciate them. Oh, absolutely. And it also goes the opposite effect, too, where you hear a song and it's like, oh, my God, this is great. I can't wait to hear it live. And they, you know, you get an off night where the band half asses it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's always a bummer. <laughs> I don't think we've we've really written anything. So, I mean, you know, there's always a night we could be off playing wise, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything we've written so far that we can't recreate pretty faithfully. Right. We, I, I, it's hard for me to not think while I'm writing, how are we going to do this live? Because part of me wants to be, really creative without any restrictions but i am i am that guy who judges bands for not being able to pull something off live so i'm like we i have to figure out how we would do this so i think we're prepared for that yeah yeah and and basically it all comes down to you know how you want to portray it live i mean cd way is one way but like if you want to add maybe like an additional breakdown or you want to have like a random solo in there live or you know maybe you just want to extend the intro a little bit like there, there's always two types of songs you know you have the written version the one on cd and you also have the one that you do live and basically they complement each other but they could also be your worst enemy so there's definitely a balance with all this and dan i think he found the band yes <laughs> after all this research <laughs> it took for fucking ever but <laughs> it said a viridian members abducted by gunmen crash their own van to escape okay yep. <laughs> rock rockfeed.net right. yep so it was viridian huh yeah never heard of them i've never and heard then i also found something about a spanish electro band that was like kidnapped and like by some cartel and I guess the police found out and they escaped, but and they were called DeLorean. It was in 2013. Oh, good. Okay, so this does happen regularly. <laughs> I guess. Wow, that's fucking creepy. Like all, all I hear about is like you know in St. Louis where people would get robbed or like Chicago. Now bands are getting fucking carjacked. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Holy. It's like, shit. what do you have to gain from that? You know, just take the gear. Yeah. Don't, yeah. You know. You could probably pawn this off for like two thousand total. Okay, sorry. <laughs> if that. Yeah, yeah. really. Depending not on our gear. Yeah, not our, our gear is probably worth like fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> then they'll take your lives, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. That, that, that's why you gotta make shit up. Be like, you know what? This is the same one Jimi Hendrix used. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely gonna get two thousand for that come on now t- and, just and then they'll be like who's Jimi hendrix and you're like ah oh, crap yeah oh yeah we're dying right, yeah this, this conversation's over <laughs> oh god almighty but yeah like we were uh just talking about uh easy core like i've 
only actually heard of that term once more by a local band around here who I believe just played Rocket Town not too long ago. They're, they're called Bad Case of Big Mouth. I don't know if you ever heard of <laughs> Yeah, them. I love those guys. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. Was just at their show. Yeah, we played with them a while back, and I just went to their show. Uh, it was last week. They're, those are super cool dudes. They're really good. Yeah. yeah they were in one of the first couple episodes. Yeah, they were one of our first interviews, too. Like, we went around, like, the whole New Jersey area and just, like, talked with our friends, and everyone's like, oh, my God, you gotta have Bad Case on. I'm like, okay, I've heard of them before, and I saw them live, and they were okay. I think I played with them before. Yeah, like... I feel like I have. Yeah, they've been around for fucking ever, and, like, I'm so glad that now they're starting to take off, slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. Like, they're on their first, like, fucking USY tour, which is basically... Yeah, it's it's great. It's kind of unheard of in, like, the New Jersey scene nowadays. Mm -hmm. But for them to break out, man, good for them. Yeah, they're they're working really hard. Like, they're they're definitely a band that we look up to in our genre because they're leading the way. And Tyler does a lot for this, the community of this genre, um, keeping everyone together on... uh, on the internet and trying to help promote people. So that's been really helpful for us as well. Yeah. And I mean, even just you mentioning like having seen them and they were just like, okay, like that really makes how they are now even better. Like they're super tight now. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, especially within our genre of pop punk in general and easy core specifically, like if you're not tight with the rest of the band, like it just doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. And they, I can say with confidence, they've, they've been one of the tightest bands that I've seen in our genre specifically for sure. And, and it, on the broader spectrum as well, even. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember seeing them. It was oof, going back maybe like four or five years. They were opening for, I think our last night at the time. And I was like, okay, I get what they're doing, but it's kind of cheesy. It's like, all right, we get, it. all right, here's the screamer who actually just uh, left the band or got kicked out or whatever the fucking story was with that. But uh, like, it was like, yeah, and then we're singing like this and then rah, 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 rah. I'm like, Ugh, all right, we get it. Hurry up now. <laughs> but j- just to hear from you guys that, you know, they've gotten tighter and gotten better. Like it really, really makes me, I, I guess, proud to say that, you know, they're from my scene. They are breaking out. They're becoming popular. Like I said, they just did the U.S. tour and stuff like that. So, and to, and what you just said, like Tyler's creating like a whole community within like the easy core, you know, genre. That's really fucking cool. So big props to them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, now, now all you need to do is just get your band to tour with them. And- oh, that's the yeah. goal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or or if anything, come up to New Jersey, man. We'll, we'll we're dude, definitely inviting. Yeah, dude, that'd be sick. Do you guys uh, play out of state often, or not really? Not yet. Okay. Um, we're we're sort of getting it together. That's that's gonna be this coming year. That's when all that's gonna happen. We're gonna we're we're working hard finishing this album, and as soon as that drops, we're gonna be like, all right, we've got this to promote now. Let's just get everywhere that we can get. Maybe not in a necessarily a consecutive tour, but everywhere outside the city uh, that we can get to, we'll go. And then again, yeah, if someone like like Bad Case or Settle Your Scores or Crunkosaurus was like, "Hey, come to these shows on our tour," like we would jump at that chance. Yeah, I think part of it, apart from kind of the rotating lineup that we've that we've had to kind of deal with up until this point of being relatively solid. I think part of the, not really the holdbacks, I mean, we can play a bunch of material, but it's just not having anything to promote. You know, there's nothing to be sending out there so that people know us ahead of time. It would just kind of be going out and trying to hope that we put on a good enough show that people will then remember us for the next three months while we finish this yeah, album. Yeah, if, if we have nothing at the merch table, we can't, like, make gas money to get back. But yeah. once we have an album... And if we if we really kill it at the show and maybe sell some shirts and CDs, then we can keep on trucking. There we go. Well, that's the name of the game. It's basically selling. It's the music business. It's not the music fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the music <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> the music fun. I can't wait to be a part of the music fun. Yeah. But I, it's the way it is, and this is the road that, you know, basically you guys took, you know, both Dan and I took in the past, and, you know, didn't quite work out for us. Yeah, oh, yeah, we crashed and <laughs> fucking burned, just like that van with those uh, stolen uh, band members. So if we think, I don't know, we could I guess you could use that analogy, we got carjacked. <laughs> yeah, yes. At that point. Uh, l- l- let's not, let's not make light of that subject, just because it, you know, it actually happened. Yeah. That's true. 
you know, but but I mean, I'm I'm sure you guys have been in like bands before where you know you you were the only one that did actual work and like everyone else tried to like coast by on what you did, you know. And we see it a lot with the podcast too. Like we have a bunch of bands reach out to us that have like maybe you know like fifty or sixty likes and they've been around for like seven years. I'm like, oh, what the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh, yeah, I, hear, I, mean, we... I, I hear a siren. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, I live, <laughs> I live right next to a road that's, like, kind of a huge shortcut. Oh, okay. So there's – not my neighborhood specifically that the sirens are traveling to, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but they are traveling through it fairly frequently because it cuts off several minutes. Maybe uh, motorcycle guy will go by in a minute. Yeah, you'll hear this guy that rides by on his crotch rocket every night. <laughs> oh, got to love those. The non-Harleys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man, what were we talking about right before? Oh, 50 or 60 likes, band oh, members yeah, yeah, not committing. Yep. Um, luckily, it hasn't been with anything super serious, but I think Matt and I have both had that in the past where either myself or Matt and other people in the band certainly too have been wanting to either make it into something real or just to do like a, an album together for fun, just to say we did something. Yeah. And then and then it just never happens, you know, either because we're all in school or all were in school rather and they just were prioritizing other things or going back to kind of the Nashville scene. That seems to be somewhat of a unfortunate recurring theme is just kind of apathy where it's, or it's one person treating themselves as more of a session musician, mm -hmm. which is pretty huge in Nashville. Here's another siren for you guys. Yep. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> First one was an ambulance. That's a cop now. So we'll uh -oh. see if we can get a fire. Shit truck is really upgrade. going down here. Get the trifecta yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been sort of a session scene previous to now where luckily we've got a fairly solid lineup but of just where somebody's like oh yeah if you're doing this show like i can i can learn it and then play it but then i'm not like a part of the band and you probably won't see me again and it's you have like, to pay me 200 dollars for it <laughs> yeah it's like, it's like that's the exact opposite of what we want to happen like we want you to never leave <laughs> just stay with us please yeah we want you to want to play yeah yeah, and it and it does seem like it's an easy thing on paper, but then like once you get to like the politics of it, it's like ugh, this is really fucking frustrating. But like you know, once you get that one lineup, and it's like, holy shit, we could finally make some goddamn music now. We could finally yeah. be a band. <laughs> yeah, that's how we feel now. Like I think we finally reached that point of like, wow, everyone is as passionate as we are. Like and bring something to the table without even being asked to like mm -hmm. that's a new experience and yeah. a wonderful experience like uh i haven't talked to you in two weeks do you guys want to practice i love that <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> right yeah that's been there yeah i've been there several times yeah <laughs> or, or or when your uh or when your band mates don't even tell you that they broke up the band and you're like oh you, you have to find out through your uh through your girlfriend and you're like oh wait a second i didn't know she was in the band <laughs> and that actually just happened to me about two weeks ago <laughs> oh man that sucks yeah so i was in a band and i actually haven't talked to any of the members in like three months like i'd i'd reach out to them be like all right what are we doing for practice like okay what about this day i'm like no i got work and like our schedules never met up so i was like okay you know what let's just you know take a break for a while and then next thing you know the guitarist of my band texts my girlfriend and says Oh yeah, by the way, uh, the, the band is done. Tell John if he doesn't know already. I'm like, oh. Why did he text her? That's what I'm still trying to figure out. That's what both my girlfriend and I are still trying to figure out. I'm like, okay, uh, you don't have the balls to text us. And like, she was more pissed off than I was. I was like, fucking laughing at it. And she was like, no, 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 that's not right. They're doing, they're, they broke up, you know, and they didn't even tell you, you know, you're a part of the band too. They asked one person, the band in particular, and you know, she was like, and all worked out. I was like, it's really doesn't matter and then she like texts the guitarist back like exactly what she told me and the guitarist is like well you know he's got a successful podcast now i don't i don't see why he cares and i'm like that is true this podcast is way more successful than this than that band would ever be so hmm. fuck it there you go <laughs> exactly i'm talking to you right now that's how fucking successful it is mm -hmm. you were on the radio <laughs> there you go one time doesn't matter you're a one hit wonderful <laughs> one, uh, one hit wonderful i've never heard that before oh it was a real big fish song oh really yeah they're making fun of uh their song sell out being like their one hit oh wow yeah and they actually wrote a song called one hit wonderful and for people out there who haven't heard it definitely listen to it it's actually really cool so that's their second hit uh it, it never became a hit it was just like an ongoing right. joke mm. but they would play it live and it's just funny <laughs> mm. 
but but yeah that that's the shit you know dan and i deal with and dan used to be in that band and he left to find greener pastures and i left and i think you can tell why yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i mean I'm, I'm glad that you guys have found something i'm also a little jealous that you guys have found something <laughs> but yeah it took it took long enough though, so don't be jealous of the process. No. Oh no no, I'm I'm not. I mean, like you can even take Dan's band now, Dead Tide. Like, how many years did it take for them to find you? Uh, I don't even know, but it's way too long. I think it was close to ten years. I swear to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. So like they had the band ready, they just couldn't find the drummer to save their lives, and I think they stumbled upon you, or you stumbled upon them. How'd it go, Dan? Um, no, I I kind of. Because the ba the bass player he found them on YouTube, so he kind of stumbled upon them, and I was familiar with the bass player, and he was always asking me like, "Oh, we're looking for a drummer," and then when things weren't going the way I planned for for me and John's band, I'm like, I heard one of their songs randomly on, on like a day off, not a day off, but a day I was working that wasn't supposed to be working, so I'm like, "Oh, let me just listen," and I was like, "Holy fuck, I need to join this band," <laughs> so I just texted him and tried out, and then that was it. And and it helps that the uh, guitarist Phil used to be like the w one of the originators of YouTube, like not creating it, but like he was like one of the original creators of it before YouTube. Yeah, basically like became someone who now. basically took advantage of it when it was kind of popular, but not as popular as it is now. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, it's it's a pretty awesome backstory how everything worked out, and hopefully stuff works out uh, even better for them in the future. Like they just opened for uh, Abigail Williams yesterday, so that's nice. Never even heard of them before. Really? They're, no. They're really yeah, yeah. They're really good death metal bands. I don't know. For me, if it's not like a band that's like signed and kind of popular, they I, are I really signed. wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Like a bigger <laughs> signed band. Dan, you're not going to open them up for Disturbed every single time you're going to play a show. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying like I wouldn't really know of them if it wasn't, you know. Like I would know smaller metal bands, but still, I'm talking smaller metal bands that are signed. Yeah. You know? And you opened up for uh, Fear Factory. Yeah. But well, that's what I'm saying. Nice. Like people have heard of Fear Factory, but I mean, on the grand scheme of things, if you talk to someone who like barely listens to metal, they would know Kill Switch Engage, but never would have heard of Fear Factory. That's yeah, kind of what I'm true. saying. You yeah. Know? But anyway, yeah. <laughs> tangent number five, I guess. That yeah, was a and, shorter one though. Yeah, that, that was kind of a shorter <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, guys. I think this will be a good place to wrap things up. Um, let's start out with the plugs. You are on Facebook at uh, No This Is Patrick Band, right? Correct. Okay, you're also on Twitter, and I don't have the URL in front of me, so I'm sorry about that. Twitter, Twitter is at NTIP Band. Okay, easy enough. The acronym yeah. along with Band. There you go. Uh, you, I'm guessing you guys are on like Instagram, uh, maybe Snapchat. Uh, not Snapchat yet. We are on Instagram. Let me actually look at Instagram if I have You can to... tell we use it daily. Yeah, I know. Right? Oh, d don't worry. We're in the yeah. same fucking boat there. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, Instagram is also No This Is Patrick Band. Um, and then, uh, and obviously, YouTube on the uh, Valinor Records yep. channel. There we go. You got that. And will we see a Snapchat? Uh, I, I could do it. I'll probably do it tonight now that you reminded me. <laughs> there you go. We'll I, I think you have the fan base for that. that. <laughs> It'll yeah, be, I uh, think it, it could work out. You know, it'll be Matt sitting at home eating some pierogies. <laughs> it'll be me chilling with my cat, maybe doing some There will be lots of pictures of me and the cat and <laughs> lots of me trying out Snapchat filters covering my face. That's the so one thing I refuse to do is not use the filters. Yeah. Yet. I refuse. No, I, I won't use those. I, I mean, I do it with my girlfriend, so it's like... Oh, man. I know that every every guy I see is doing... Uh, She's like, games. smile. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Enough <laughs> with I that shit. I don't look like a freaking chipmunk. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, look at this pretty crown. Oh, yay. Uh, enough. <laughs> I don't know. We've had with the face swaps before. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some, some of them are really cool. Well, yeah, isn't it? It's cool because they don't they come out with, like, special ones every now and again. Like yeah, for every, like, promotional stuff. Exactly. So that's like cool. You know, it's not just like lame filters that are there all the time. It's you know, next month you might come into something that's you know, New Year's Eve ish, or like obviously this month it's Christmas. Yeah, and I think the there was one that completely freaked me out. But I said this, I thought this was completely awesome. There was a it was a girl taking a selfie like in a dark area, 
and she um like used a Snapchat like the face swap thing, and it looked like it was a demon, like right behind her, and the he she swapped the faces. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but it looked like she tur- like her face was like on like a ghoulish you know ghost type of deal in the background. It was the coolest shit I've ever seen, but I can't find it now for whatever reason. <laughs> So if you could do that on Snapchat, that'd be fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll swap faces with some demons and that'll, <laughs> yeah. that'll be the next step. We'll, yeah, Radio yeah. play, face swapping demons. <laughs> hand hand. There you go. Song title, face swapping demons. Yeah. There you go. Done. Make it happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we usually play out a song at the end of the interview. Should I just go with the a thousand miles cover? Yeah. A thousand miles would be great. And then, uh, album coming out title is uh better than high school should be january or february march at the latest i'll go insane if it takes that long but <laughs> okay so there's a possibility that brian wilson can reincarnate into your body even though he's not dead yet <laughs> yes yeah in terms I of feel like if anyone if anyone has that power it's brian wilson <laughs> and what he has done have you ever seen that movie where uh john cusack p- plays him no oh you should definitely check that out. Uh, I forgot what it was called, but if you just put in John Cusack, Brian, Brian, uh, Brian Wilson, fuck, I keep forgetting his name. It, it'll pop up. It was actually pretty good. Nice. I have to check that out. There you go. You got some homework now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great night, and hopefully, thank we'll you. talk soon. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank.